Good morning, Carbini. It's RJ back with another video. So let's get to it. Today's random Mike Schmidt item of the day. Something I picked up recently for my collection. Very cool, cool item, I think. Still in the original packaging. A Franklin Glow Bright Orange Baseball endorsed by Mike Schmidt. It's got Mike's facsimile signature on there. Nice little picture of him advertising it. Lists him as the National League MVP. So I'm guessing the copyright date on this is somewhere around 82 or 81. Uh, because that's the early years of when he got his first MVPs. And the picture looks kind of like that. So anyway, that's all this up on the bay and had to snag it. Certainly did. Awesome little piece to my collection for Mr. Mike Schmidt. Very cool item. I'm very happy to have it in my collection. So, my random baseball item of the day. Just a generic card from the Conlon Collection 1992 version. Uh, this is card number 644 of Spex Torp Toporker. Topo Toporser. I don't even know how you say his name. Anyway, Spex was a utility infielder for the Cardinals back in some of their fantastic years of the 20s. So he would have been on the 26 World Series team. Uh, I always love the picture of him uh, being a guy wearing glasses. Uh, you don't see too many people playing baseball wearing glasses even to this day. Um, famous, more recent one, even though it's not even recent anymore, Chris Sabo with the bespeckled look uh, years ago. But Spex is noted as being, and here on the back, Spex, your Torpoker, earned his nickname by being the first infielder to wear glasses on the field. There you go. So he was the first people, first guy to actually wear, uh, well, it says infielder, so he was the first infielder. Maybe there was an outfielder who wasn't concerned about hard hit ground balls in his face. Uh, but Spex wore glasses on the infield and was the first to do so. Just wanted to show off that little card, all right? All right, today, uh, today's trivia question, I'm going to do a theme this week of brothers in baseball. So, simple question. I've asked this one before. It's a very simple question to look up. Um, <clears throat> name me, uh, brothers and pairs, um, name me both sets of brothers that have been elected into the Hall of Fame. There are two sets of brothers that have been elected into the Hall of Fame. Name both of them. All right, what you're playing for is a pair of cards, therefore, obviously. 1999, a couple Yankees for you. Topps Gold Label, 1999, Paul O'Neill and Orlando Hernandez. El Duque and Paul O'Neill. If you're a Yankees fan, these are two prominent members of the Yankees back in some of their glory years of the late 90s. That's your prize. So send me the email with the correct answer to that trivia question. I will include my email in the description below along with the repeat of that question. You will have today and tomorrow to answer. We'll pick a winner on Sunday, all right? Good luck to everybody on that. Today, what I want to talk about is um, a new pickup I got a while ago, but I'm going to do it by way of showing off a lot of different things. Talking about Upper Deck Baseball Heroes product. Now, everybody knows, or you should know, about the Find the Reggie. Um, Upper Deck created quite the uh, frenzy in 1990. During the 1990 high-numbered release, randomly inserted, they had the Reggie Auto card. Now, here is what the card looked like, but I do not have an autoed version. I was looking it up earlier today, and these command quite a premium. Uh, you know, probably going to cost you anywhere from fifteen hundred to two grand, maybe more if you're desperate. Um, but it was this card that was autographed. If you want to know if you've got an actual Reggie auto or somebody else's fake or one that Reggie signed that wasn't part of the print run, it's a very easy thing to do. First of all, the Reggie. Autos that are part of the release in the high number were serial numbered. Secondly, 
Upper Deck did this with most of their things. The hologram on the back was usually a diamond, not a, a circle or a home plate or whatever other version. So Upper Deck was very good of distinguishing between the ones made specially for the insert and then the uh, ones that were autographed later. So uh, that was the stir that they created. And what it actually was, was part of a larger set. So you would get, all of these cards were randomly inserted into packs, but only a few, uh, 2,500, were actually autographed by Reggie. So it always came with this header, and this was the official Baseball Heroes logo from when they first did it in the Upper Deck High number to, I guess, to this day, if they ever release, I don't know if they release any more Baseball Heroes product. They certainly don't baseball because they don't have the license, but... This was the header card, and on the back, it just talked about the player. There was no other information. The uh, auto art card was a checklist card. It had the checklist of the other cards. There was always nine. There was always a header card, which was unnumbered, and then nine other cards that were numbered. And here is the whole Reggie set. So you got uh, 1969, an emerging superstar. Look. Reggie looking very young, no stash. 1973 is MVP year, still no stash. 1997, his breakout year with the Yankees. 78. 1982, over to the Angels. 1984, his 500th home run. 1986, moving up the list on home runs, and then 87, finishing up back with the A's, where he started. So those were the, four, the the nine cards that made up the Reggie set, and again, plus the header card. Now, that happened in the high number series of Upper Deck. Now, Upper Deck continued to release hero cards for the next three years. So they would put a random insert, the same thing, the same layout, 10 cards, one header that was not numbered, but had a bio of the person. And then nine cards, eight photos and bios with the checklist and the art card on the back. Here is the second one. In your um, first release in 1991, Nolan Ryan was the guy. And there were, they continued the numbering, interestingly. So this one was not numbered one through nine. It was numbered 10 through 18. Upper deck high number in 1991 was Hank Aaron. And you can see the numbering continued. 1992, first issue, Ted Williams. 1992, high number, Bench and Morgan. Now, interestingly, those cards I just showed, up until the Bench and Morgan, you can find autoed. For whatever reason, Upper Deck did issue two more Heroes sets, only two more. And then stopped, num stopped the auto. They did not get number. Here's here's your uh, your first release in '93 was Willie Mays. There are no Willie Mays auto cards. They did not release an insert of Willie Mays autos. They didn't chase the Willie. And then in that high number, they put out a future stars or future heroes release. Uh, one of each of these players on separate cards, art form version. And that was your checklist. And it was, you know, I don't know why they didn't bother to do the signature anymore, but they stopped. Very strange, very interesting, but very strange. Now, Upper Deck in 2005 came back with the Upper Deck Heroes in a big, big way. They actually released a 200-card set. Now, it was interesting. The set was released with... Um, 50 players, uh, I'm sorry, not 50 players, <laughs> excuse me, um, tw 20 players, uh, I'm doing my math in my head, 20 players, five cards each. So, um, there's a little bit more to the story, but uh, that's how I'm going to start it. So, there were 200 cards, the first 100 were 20 different players, each with five cards. The second hundred were another 
20 players each with five cards, but the second set, the second set of 100, which all make up a 200 base set, are serial numbered uh, out of 575. I hate Upper Deck for doing this. They did it in so many different products where they would release a main, they'd release a whole set, but part of the cards, part of the release, were serial numbered and short printed. I hate that. It's just the way they did a lot of their issues. Anyway, I Mike Schmidt was a part of that release. So he was cards 41 through 45. And similar to before, you would get four, in this case, four cards with pictures and poses. Notice they still have the exact same Baseball Heroes logo. You get that, four different styles, and then you would get a header art card. Now, being this is 2005, obviously there are many parallels to this. There is a green, a red, a blue, a gold. So, um, you know, it takes a while to find all those. I have not yet acquired any more other than the base set. I do have two other sets. One is green, one is gold, but they are like printer's proofs because they are not serial numbered. Those, they're, they're the exact cards as these, but they're green and green or red, but they're not stamped with a gold foil number. Anyway... Similar to other products, not only were they invariable, available in various uh, serial numbered par colored parallels, they were also num available in signed and relic versions. So here is one I showed off before. Uh, a while ago, several years ago now, one of my big first big purchases was somebody had the whole run of green signature up for grabs, and I snagged it for quite the penny. So... Again, it's the exact same poses as the regular base. It's just that it's each card is signed. Now, these are not matching serial numbers. I think that would be kind of cool, but it's hard to get such a thing. You know, it's almost impossible to find that. Interestingly, the uh, header card was foil, foiled in green foil, and this one, the rest are foiled in gold foil. I don't know why they bothered to do that, but it's true. So there are your signature versions. And then something I just picked up recently, it was up on the bay. Uh, I went in strong to make sure I got every one of these because somebody had an entire run of a relic version and I got the blue relic version. Very ecstatic. So here are the entire run of blue relics. All serial numbered out of 99 as well. This one's two out of 99, that's kind of cool. Low number, serial number there. And each one barely has a stripe visible. So that's nice that you've got a uniform with a stripe. Even the header card had a uh, serial number in it. And again, this one is blue foil, colored foil for the header card for some reason. Now, the uh, some of the players included in the um, Hero product back in 2005 were deceased. So they don't have signature versions, but they do have a couple cut signatures. I know Babe Ruth had a one of one cut signature out of this product. So uh, if you were a collector of that, you could do that. Um, and the material versions as well. It's very, you know, very 2000s era or today to the way we do all our serial numbers. Anyway, I was very happy, like I said recently, to pick up these blue parallels of the, uh, the first, this is the first relic one I got of this set. Um, there were others available on the bay at that same time, but they were not a, a, a complete set like this blue was. Uh, so I snagged the blue one and left the others alone. Someday maybe I'll go after the other parallels, but again, you know, it's a lot of money. Um, I trying to say, spend my hobby dollars wisely. I've got the base version, I've got the signature version, and I got a relic version now. I might just stand pat on that. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, check out the um, Baseball Heroes of 2005 if you're a uh, guy who loves a certain player. See if your player made the list. All right. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider like, subscribe, and commenting and all that jazz. I really do appreciate it. Um, don't forget the trivia question. Come back again on Wednesday and Friday for more trivia and prizes. Uh, hope to see you there. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great week and take care.